To start with wire bonding, you'll need to cut a piece of gold wire to the length that you need. So that's the distance between your contact and the edge of the chip carrier where you're going to contact it. So that distance, for example, is here to about here. Uh, it's less than a centimeter. It's a little bit more than half a centimeter but you'll have to kind of play with it and get the length right. Um, close to three quarters of a centimeter is usually good because then you can bend it. So you set the gold wire out on, the, on this uh, black plastic cutting area. Uh, you may need to be grounded if the wire starts flying off or sticking to things. Uh, static really affects this. And you find the end of the wire, then just cut it like that, and pick it up with the tweezers. Once you have the wire cut, you bring it over to the sample carefully, and set it about where you want to make your next contact. Oh, that piece I made was too long. So I'm just going to hold it where I want to cut and slice off the rest. Okay. So what I like to do is set the wire on the indium dot, if you have one, first. So get it in position there. Then what you can do is use the side of the tweezers and actually press it into the indium. You have to be very careful not to pull the indium contact off when you're doing this, but if you can press it in, then it will be held in place and that will help a lot. Now you need to move, now that the, the wire is stuck in there, you need to move it over, you need to bend it over to the other uh, contact. We always use one off from the center for haul, so in this case I went from this contact to this, I'm going to this pad here. So since my wire is still a little long, I'm actually going to hold it up and bend it down with another set of tweezers. Alright, my wire was too long so I kind of knotted it up at the end. Uh, it's important to make sure you get the end of the wire inside the silver paste or inside the indium. So now with the silver paste, I have my silver paste here that I've already shaken up enough. Uh, give it another shake just to make sure. And I'm going to do what we showed earlier. Uh, for making the contacts in the first place. Use a glass slide. And you wouldn't normally do this up here, I'm just trying to get it in the frame. Use a glass slide and just put a single dot somewhere on the glass. Now you take the acupuncture needle, uh, which looks like this, and let this silver here dry for a moment. Then you can use the acupuncture needle to scoop up some of the silver, get a small ball on the end there. Use, then you just touch it to the wire, both on the indium to make sure that 
the wire is making good contact and on the contact pad It's important to make sure that the silver paint doesn't contact the ground planes. So that's up here. And that the silver paint doesn't run down over the edge and go inside uh, to the ground plane on the bottom. So you need to get it just on the pad that you want. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more paint because my wire is kind of sticking out. And move this out of the way so it's not in my way. Oh, too much paint. Okay. You kind of have to play a balancing act between uh, letting the silver paint get too dry and tacky and too liquidy because you don't want it to run and spread all over but you also don't want it to stick to the wire and pull the wire away with you. Uh, so that kind of takes some luck and timing and it depends on how old the silver paint is. Uh, a fresh bottle you have the longest time to deal with, the, the, the widest window. Once you start using thinner in the silver paint it doesn't seem to work as well, it just dries really fast. So make sure you're using, if you're using a fresh bottle and you shake it really, really well. And then when you're done, seal the bottle up very well with tape and make sure it doesn't dry out. Yep, that looks good. I'll do the next one. And I can't seem to get it off the tweezers, it's just sticking, so use another pair to help out. Press it into the indium. Grab the end. and bend it into the position I want. Well, like I've said, if you, it's a lot easier if you have it bent perfectly, pushing on the contact you want before you use the silver paint. Now again, it's been a few minutes, so I do need to shake the silver paint again. Someday it might be good to have somebody build a paint roller that just constantly rolls this paint so that we don't have to shake it all the time. Um, it might keep it from drying out, but, well, I don't know about that. But it would definitely keep it from separating so much. Okay. Now the acupuncture needle, make sure you clean the needle and the tweezers every single time you put, touch them to paint. They can't have dried paint on them. You need the tips to be small and to fit together well. Okay, now I've already done the other two, but that's how you wire bond a sample into a chip carrier.
At this point, typically, you'll want to let the silver paint dry overnight before you measure the sample. Uh, you can start measuring now, but its resistance is not going to be reliable until it's completely cured. So your options are you can put it on a hot plate and heat it if your sample can take that. Uh, but if you don't want to anneal it, then just letting it sit at room temperature overnight is fine. I like to put it in a case or something so it doesn't get dirty. Now unfortunately with this sample, this is all silver paint dots, uh, so it's going to be a little bit trickier. I don't have the indium to press the wire into, um, but we'll see. We'll get it to work. Uh, I've already deposited these, or put these silver paint contacts on the other day and let them dry. It might actually have been easier to leave them wet, so we'll, we'll see. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to use this wire. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it actually has a little bend in it. Uh, I don't want that because those have a tendency to break if there's a sharp crease in the in the gold wire. They have a tendency to break or just have uh, not stable resistance, especially since we're going to be temperature cycling these down to down know, 2 Kelvin multiple times. Uh, not everything has the same thermal expansion coefficient. If you find the wire is flying away from you too much, uh, it's often a problem of static. So you can use white static resistant gloves instead of these uh, the rubber gloves. And you should probably have on a static wrist strap. Where can I put that? should probably have on one of these static wrist straps. There is a place for them to be plugged into on this wire bonding station. All right, when I put the silver paint down, the wire flipped or moved away. So I need to very carefully put it back and then get more silver paint on there. So in this case, because the wire is just kind of sitting there loose, I found it helpful to get big big dollops of silver paint that just kind of come off. 
um, looks like it might be shorted to the ground, or at least to this other contact pad. It doesn't matter if it goes to the contact pad, but ground is not what we want. All right. Oops, sorry, microphone. So I'm using a lot of paint so that I don't have to touch the wire itself. I can just put it near and let it flow onto the wire. Uh, it's also a little bit dangerous because I almost shorted it out twice. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but when you're doing the wires, it seems to be important to actually get the end of the wire inside the silver. Uh, I don't, or inside the, the paint. Yeah, the silver paint. So I don't know if that's because the wire has oxidized. That doesn't really make a lot of sense for gold, or if there's some sort of coating on it. Uh, but the ends seem to be important in my experience, to get low resistance contacts. Uh, so try to get the ends in there. But basically that's all four of these and all four of the other contacts, and that's all. So when you're finished, please make sure to turn off the lights, clean up your sample, set it somewhere safe where it's not going to get knocked on the floor and broken or dirty, uh, and And please make sure to wrap, close the silver paint tightly and then wrap it up with something. Tape or something on the seal stops it from drying out. There is a little bit of leak. So this seems to help, like that. Thank you. All right, thank you.